So what we are going to do is that we will be looking at the temperature and salinity cycles and the ambient open ocean. So instead of going straight into the into the shelf seas and through the shallow regions, let's have a look how it looks like in the ambient ocean. Yeah, because you can see from this map already that the temperature increases as you move northward. Similarly, actually, the salinity decreases as you go closer towards the equator because you go into the intertropical convergence zone where you have increased rainfall. Okay, let's see how these TS diagrams look like. So the, all that's shown here is the seasonal cycle. Okay, this is why you have ellipses in this group. You have one for the northern region. Okay? And the northern region we define as the latitude band between 10 and 15 degrees south. And you get a temperature cycle here. Warmest, okay, 30 degrees, coldest, 26. And you also get some variation in the salinity. But overall, the salinity is lower than in the central and southern parts of the Great Bear. Okay, you get gets colder as you go to the south, but the salinity increases. Okay, and this so this is the feature now. This is your reference. This is what you want to compare your shallow water observations with. Okay, are you ready? We can now look at the data from the from the reef. Okay, here are the data from the reef. And the interpretation comes in two slides later. But first of all, let's see what is the difference. So what you see here for each of the three regions, you see monthly values. For example, look at the south region, the southern region. Okay. Let me try to activate the laser here. You can see the south. You can see information about July. And then you see October. Okay, February, so it's something that moves in a counterclockwise sense, monthly values, and essentially you get a warmest month is February, the coldest month is July, and you get a little bit of variation of the, of the salinity, which is similar to what you find in the ambient open ocean. Okay, so here I'll, I'll give you an interpretation, okay? Um, yeah, the interpretation is well, you see something similar to what you see in the in the uh, open ocean, but just a little, little bit more enhanced because you're in shallower water. So you get warmer during summer, colder during winter. Okay, hey, hang on. Question. The question comes, why do you actually get an enhanced temperature cycle? You get an enhanced temperature cycle in shallower water because you have less volume that gets heated up or cooled down okay so the volume that you that responds to the heat flux is less which means that the volume responds faster to a heat flux and you also get a bigger signal and the same to the salinity salinity influence and that's 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 important okay so what do you get now in the in the middle part the central part of the great barrier reef is this this curve here with the green dots okay and you again get a seasonal cycle you have to follow the dot by dot in an anti-clockwise sense and if you don't understand what i mean by anti-clockwise it's these old-fashioned watches you remember the, the one with the fingers you know that that turn and, you, and that means anti-clockwise means you know if you only have dig a digital watch it, you you might have problems to understand what i'm saying so just look it up you can see also overall you know you get a little bit less saline okay, it's shifted to the left okay it's a little bit warmer it's shifted a little bit a little bit upward but you get a big spike low salinity in february Okay, so here in this central region, a big spike in February. 
Why is that? Neighbor comes. I heard about there is a very low salinity. It's not very low. I mean, it's very too less than. But anyway, there is a clear spike in low salinity. Where does that come from? And you know the answer. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Must come from rivers, doesn't it? What else can do it? Okay, and then you go further to the northern parts, and in the northern parts you get almost a circle. Okay, again it is, and anti-clockwise you go from one month, you get colder. July is the coldest. Okay, you already get January is the warmest month. You get a much broader, much larger salinity changes. Okay, and over more months. All right, just telling you again where you know where do you get the 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 river flows okay river runoff to the great barrier reef you have the burdekin river in central parts and that the outflow peaks during during that time okay during the february time and that creates the big peak okay and here's the interpretation then okay? southern part similar to coral sea but enhanced through shallow water effect central part influenced by river runoff burdekin river that peaks during summer, and that's why you get this big spike in low salinity water in February. Northern part influenced by river input from Papua New Guinea, the Fly River, and high evaporation during spring, early summer. So that influences that. So you actually get different subregions in the Great Barrier Reef that surprisingly you get very much similar. Uh, temperatures in most most parts okay and that's essentially due to the um, in the atmospheric heating but also the influence by the uh, uh, east australian current okay you, you, you can see that here okay but anyway you get quite different responses in terms of the the salinity so that was the case study okay all right and your ecosystem of these areas has adjusted over many many years to these cycles this is the environment condition that changes from month to month and your ecosystems have adjusted to these uh, seasonal variations 